Hello students, I'm Anju Segal Gupta and today we are going to talk about a very important aspect of English language teaching learning which is enriching your vocabulary. As students of English and I am as much a student as you are, we have to continuously uh, strive to enrich our vocabulary because our grammar and our pronunciation will eventually take care of itself. But it is going to be your vocabulary which is going to either make or break your learning of English. So let's look at this title active and passive vocabulary and try and answer this question. Do you use all the unfamiliar words, the meanings of which you may have guessed while reading or listening? Obviously you don't. Our listening and reading vocabulary is much more than our speaking or writing vocabulary. So words that you can use appropriately when you say or write something is your active vocabulary. And those you can guess the meanings of but cannot use confidently form your passive vocabulary. So those which you are very comfortable using day to day is your active vocabulary and those you've got the sort of guess the meaning of but you cannot confidently use it is your passive vocabulary and you will notice that your active vocabulary is much smaller than your passive vocabulary and our job as English language students is to increase the repertoire of both the active and the passive vocabulary and convert the passive into your active vocabulary. What does knowing a new word mean? It primarily means what words it is usually associated with and whether it has any particular grammatical characteristics, also how it is pronounced. So knowing a word is quite a lot. You have to know what are the words it is associated with? What are some of the grammatical characteristics? How it is pronounced? So it's a big job. Now, how to learn new words? You do not learn new words in isolation, but with other associated words and phrases. So you sort of write down adjectives together with the nouns that they are associated with and vice versa. So you will have a royal family, you will have a rich vocabulary. So you don't learn royal separately and family separately and rich separately and vocabulary separately. They are all interconnected. That's the beauty of all languages and especially of English. Then write down verbs with the structure and nouns associated with them. So we'll have a phrase like to add to our knowledge of the subject. So to add would be the ver verb and you are you're going to say it as to add to our knowledge of the subject. To express an opinion, to express is again a verb. So you're going to say it all together. Then write down noun in phrases. It's a train set. There are shades of opinion. Never shades separately, of separately, opinion separately. It is together. Write down words with their prepositions at a high level. Thank you for your help. Okay. At, for. So that's how you, that's why I said it's important to know the vocabulary. With that, you will get to know the grammar and the pronunciation as well. Then the grammatical uh, features of the words. For example, when the verb is irregular, like gone. When the noun is uncountable, for example, music, or a noun when it is used only in the plural, for example, scissors or trousers. And you have to make a note of any special problems with the words. Okay, so these are the ways that you learn new words. Then you have content and structure words. Now, Look at the first sentence and read the sentence and you will see saw, beautiful bird, sitting, branch, gulmohar, tree. 
Now the underlying words, even as isolated, discrete words, carry some meaning. So saw, beautiful, bird, sitting, branch, gulmohar tree, all have some meaning. And these, because these words are nouns, adjectives, verbs and adverbs. So these are called content words. Now words which are not underlined like I, a, on, a, of, a. These are function or structure words. And they carry grammatical meaning. They don't carry the content meaning. So they're usually modals or auxiliary verbs or determiners, preposition, conjunctions like and. So beautiful, can you will, uh, you know, it will carry a lot of meaning for you or a bird will, there are several types of birds. So these have a lot of meanings which are associated with these words and they're content words because this, uh, this group of content words keeps increasing as you will soon find out. But function or structure words they do not keep increasing. So as, the, as more and more contexts arrive in the language, are, are present in the language, the content words increase. New learners learn content words first and such words, such list of words are open-ended. And new words are added to this list over the years. You've a helipad, for instance, smart class, very recent. Did these words exist some hundred years ago? No. And why are these words added to the list of words so commonly used today? Because society has changed in different ways. There's more technology. So the content words which are open-ended keep increasing. The function words are a smaller set. Although they're much more frequently used. But this is a closed uh, set. You won't find too many new determiners or prepositions that have been added. Maybe some, but very few. Some difficulties in learning English vocabulary. Now, learners of English, special, especially second language, language learners of English, find a few stumbling blocks. For example, one word may have many meanings, homonyms. Homonyms are those words which have the same spelling and pronunciation but different meanings in different contexts. For example, club. There's a local club in your country. Bhim has a club in his hand in Mahabharat. There are, in a pack of cards, you have clubs. Or you take the word bed. She went to her room and lay down on the bed. So that is a bed in your room, in your bedroom. So my husband is busy preparing a bed for the roses. So some soil so that roses can be planted there. And heat the curry and serve it on a bed of rice. So you have a bed of rice and on top of it you can pour some curry. Then you have homophones. There is here same sound, different form and meanings. So you have great, like a great person, and you have great, like you grate the apple. Uh, in Hindi, you would say kadukas or ghiakas. A flower as flour and you knead the flour for and make dough and you have flowers which you plant a rose flower you break you break something or the car in a car you break there there's something there's a pencil sitting there on the table this is their pen this is their pencil stationary and stationary so one is which is in one place and the other is which is stationary like books and pencils and, and your eraser. So what was common in the previous set of words? The pronunciation of the words was exactly the same but the spelling was different. So homo means same, 
phone means sound so the pronunciation was exactly the same spelling is different the meaning is also different so these are known as homophones then you have same form different sound and meaning homographs so the director secretary wrote the minutes of the meeting even minute details were taken care of by a diligent organizer so warriors in earlier days fought with bows and arrows we bow our head to the martyrs of our freedom movement so the spelling in both sets of sentences are the same but the pronunciation is different so you have minutes and you have minute you have bows and you bow your head and then you have uh, the pronunciation very different spelling in both sets of the words are same very important part collocations now collocations refer to a group of words that often go together or that are likely to occur together so somebody is a light sleeper that you know a smallest sound will wake you up that person is a light sleeper or a person is a early riser so now not only light sleeper go together but there is a degree of predictability in their association so you know if there is light it's likely to be sleeper early is likely to be riser after that that is why i keep telling you you have to learn your vocabulary not as separate discrete items but in association with other words so uh, predictability means that if i give you one word you can predict the other word with varying degrees of success the predictability is certainly not 100% but it is much higher than with non collocates take auspicious you will get auspicious occasion you will have auspicious moment auspicious event you will have a uh, completely satisfied but you will not say downright satisfied that doesn't collocate you will have excruciating pain a lot of pain not excruciating joy it only goes with pain you will have lions roar but you will not have lions shout you can commit suicide but you cannot undertake suicide so these are also things that is why it's so important to always have words uh, in a sense learn words in association with other words so you will have a fast train but you cannot have a quick train you can have fast food but you cannot have quick food you can have a quick shower but you cannot have a fast shower you can have a quick meal because you are in a hurry but you cannot have a fast meal understand so be very careful about collocation then prefixes and suffixes you all know about you know you can have and there's so many of them so you have negative prefixes which contribute the meaning of not opposite of lacking in and again they are attached to adjectives nouns verbs adverbs that is why you will learn the grammar once you know the vocabulary so you will have un with unhappy in with intolerant dis with discredit a uh, with a moral non with a non starter let's take some more examples of negative prefixes un occurs typically with adjectives and with verbs and uh, so you can have an unkind person and unending unending stream of bad events unexpected surprised ill something which is illegal illegible which you cannot read irregular irreligious impossible imbalance immovable uh these negative prefixes within occur mostly with nouns and adjectives incomplete work inevitable inability to do something which is a noun injustice that was committed then un and in is very interesting un is used with adjectives but in with 
nouns. So it's the same sort of stem. So you're unable to do something. So that is a, uh, an adjective. But in is inability to do something. Unequal, inequality, unjust system, injustice that was committed. So that is why it is very important to learn the words, learn the stems of the words, so you will anyway pick up the grammar. Then we have pejorative prefixes which have the element bad, badly, wrong, wrongly, imitation, false. For example, mal, usually with the verbs, maltreat somebody. Noun, with nouns you have maladministration, malnutrition. With participles you have malnourished person, maladjusted. Okay? With adjectives, malodorous. Then miss also conveys the meaning of bad, wrong, improperly. So mishandle, mislead, misguided, misfortune with noun, misrule. Pseudo, which is uh, attached freely to nouns and adjectives and uh, to form other nouns and adjectives. So you have uh, pseudo-intellectual, pseudo-scientific. Okay. Then you have number prefixes, again attached to nouns and adjectives. So by as in to, bigamy, bilingual. Uh, di uh, occurs with scientific words, so dioxide. Tri as in tripod, tricycle, mono as in one, monolingual, monotonous, uni, uni, unidirectional, unilateral, semi, semicircle. Then suffixes, which there are two types of suffixes. Suffixes which change the part of speech of the word and those that do not. Those which do not change the part of the speech of the word are things like Bag, baggage, bond, bondage. These are all nouns. Post, postage. Kingdom, king, kingdom. Star, stardom. Jewel, jewelry. Weapon, weaponry. Slave, slavery. State, statehood. Boy, boyhood. You farm something or I'm farming something. Okay? Hero, heroism. Member, membership. Fellow, fellowship. So these are which do not change the part of speech of the word. Then you have suffixes which change the part of speech of the word. For example, you form nouns from adjectives. So a free person, you can form a noun like freedom. False person, falsehood. Regular work, regularity. The regularity of his work. That's a noun. And uh, sweet, sweetness. Dark, darkness. Something which is wide, which is a wide uh, passage, the width of the passage. The width is the noun. Wide passage is the adjective. Uh, and then there are suffixes which are attached to verbs to form nouns. Uh, for example, to break something, the breakage of the of all the crockery, the breakage of all the crockery. Waste material, the wastage of all the food at the wedding. Examine, examination. Refuse, refusal. Survive, survival. And uh, this suffix also affects the stress pattern. So examine, examination. Alter, alteration. So you see, the stress pattern also is changed. So it is not only to do with the, uh, the, the word, the uh, meaning of the word, but it is also to do with the pronunciation of the word. Then synonyms. For example, you have amazing. Uh, with amazing, you have incredible, fantastic, fabulous, astonishing. With awful, you can have terrible, dreadful, with break, you can have rupture, fracture, shatter. So it's very, very important to know both the synonyms as well as the antonyms of 
words. For example, now as uh, you know, all of you are business students as well, computer students, but this is a course in communication, business communication. So if you can, you the vocabulary for describing trends, for example. So if you're talking of uh, the sales of computers going up, so rise, increase, go up, improve, surge, soar, uh, nouns, arise, an upward movement, an improvement, a jump, a surge. Uh, going down would be fall, decrease, decline, plummet, shrink. And frequent change up and down would be something which fluctuates, uh, fluctuation if it's a noun. And if it is, there is no change, it's stable, constant, stays at the same level, it is stabilized. So it's very important to also be aware of the synonyms and the antonyms. Idioms, uh, they're culturally understood by native speakers, but they have to be learned by second language speakers. And the interesting things, thing is that no connection, there is no connection between the words that make up the idiom and the actual meaning of the expression. For example, it's raining cats and dogs. Okay, so it is, it means it's raining heavily. But this has no connection with cats and dogs. Okay, so idioms are something that we as second language speakers of English have to learn. Uh, for example, he knew that the police was treading on his heel. So it means following closely after. His dealings are all above board. Now above and board have nothing to do with honesty. But here it means honest. Then phrasal verbs, used primarily in informal, written and spoken English. And uh, so, you, instead of using descend, for example, you will say go down. Go down is the phrasal verb. Instead of saying erase something, you will say rub out. Okay. These also have to be consciously remembered and learnt by second language speakers. So, uh, you, you take off your coat. Now, you will see that the meaning is quite different from the combination of its part. Sometimes, you, he took off his coat, yes. Uh, there is some similarity between taking off your coat. But, sometimes it is quite different from the combination of its part. For, for instance, he took me in with his story. That is, he deceived me. Alright? Nothing to do with took me in. Uh, or go off. Oh, I'm going off today. Which is to depart. Or the bomb went off. Again, uh, the bomb will go off. Which is explode. So, go off has nothing to do with explode or depart. Again, something which we use informally, similes. This has something to do with the, the parts, but not, not so much, but still has something to do with the parts. For example, you has de as dead as a doornail, means totally dead, as blind as a bat. Bats are supposed to be blind. So this has something to do with the parts, as strong as an ox. As quiet as a mouse, as heavy as lead, as black as night, as white as snow, and uh, as brown as a berry, as good as gold. Here, good as gold, probably good here means gold is expensive and therefore good. And as cool as a cucumber. Then we come to binomials. These are pairs of words, fixed pair of words pairs of words which are normally linked by a conjunction or preposition. Again, grammar. Again, they are of uh, their idiomatic and expression. So you say, I'm sick and tired of all this homework. Sick and tired. Odds and ends. That is small, unimportant things. Let's get the main things packed 
we can do the odds and ends later matlab you can do the smaller things later give and take which is a spirit of compromise every relationship needs a bit of give and take to be successful so all these are known as binomials tears are part and parcel of growing up you know a part of growing up the boss was ranting and raving at us shouting very angry the old cottage has gone to rack and ruin it's decayed he is so prim and proper at work very fussy the hotel was a bit rough and ready poor standard you go to a hotel you stay there and you say it's rough and ready poor standard she used to wine and dine important clients entertain so wine and dine somebody is to entertain them then let's turn to foreign words that we use every day you know foreign words which are now part of english and um, very common so ad nauseum tom talked ad nauseum about the time he scored the winning run so there's a sickening degree went on and on talking it's from latin or the lecture seemed to drone on ad infinitum it just went on to infin- uh, infinity we were so bored shaila's teenage angst was nothing compared to the parental angst experienced by the two individuals whose duty was to raise her so dread and anxiety she the, she as a teenager was in this hormonal stage dreading and full of anxiety and so were the parents and her, hers was less than the parents they were also fed up of her and that's a german word then bo- bon voyage so that's having a nice trip so we all shouted bon voyage as the segels left for their vacation then bon appetit enjoy your food that's again french bon appetit then from La- latin it's bona fide so anita's teacher was a bona fide expert in european history genuine expert then persona non grata an unacceptable person so sunita was a persona non grata in our club because she wouldn't follow the rules prima facie that clear and evident there was a prima facie case against him clear and evident prima donna temperamental conceited person so parul wasn't popular with the other girls because they considered her to be a prima donna so these are some of the words that i have mentioned this is just a birds eye view of what you have to do in order to improve your vocabulary so i would suggest using this as a cue become a word seeker learn new words every day i would suggest learn about 10 words at least make that part of your passive vocabulary and then to make it part of your active vocabulary at least use five of them thank you very much i hope this whole a uh, video was interesting for you and helpful for you thank you very much again